get on the bus, stark naked, except they're wearing clothes? Barely. What can you do? That's the style. Got a stud through their nose, stud through their mouth. Ears have been elongated with holes in the middle. What can you do? It's the style. It's just expected that you're going to take a hit from the ball, smoke a little dope and do some drinking because, hey, we're teenagers. That's what we do. It's this whole contrived artificial thing that's been created. If you want to read a really good book on this, it's called The Myth of the Teenager. Really good book. Shows you the sources for when it was first invented, how they made it up. I think you read that book, you'll know how to properly raise your children and to avoid this disease called the teenager. Because it's fake, it's totally contrived. It's totally, oh, my children are hormonal and they're going through all these problems with teenagers. No, they're not. They just need to be trained and taught and other things. But they've created this. They've created it. Now, there was also, this was also the same year that Salavi Kol captured sizable enough sections of Arabia and killed enough people to rename the Arabian Peninsula al mamlakatul al-Arabiyya to Saudiya, the Saudi Arab Kingdom. That's the literal name for it. So we take over your house and we name it Brother Hamid's New House. How can you take something that's not yours and name it after your family? Right? Chowdhury Family Home. And it's not yours. You just physically took it over. Right? Khan Family Holiday Home. And it's Brother Ahmed Fahim's house. It's ours now. We took it. And this is what happened. Now, 1376 to 1395 saw the United States defeated the second time in a war with the Vietnamese people in an attempt to establish a foothold against the French, Communist Chinese, and Nationalist Vietnamese rebels. Cham Muslims lost some one million people fighting jihad against all four groups in Cambodia and Vietnam, but few Muslims and English may know their name or their struggle. Cham Muslims are the Malay Muslims that rode over about a thousand years ago on boats from Malaysia into those areas. They're mainly Shafi and Fiqh. And they exterminated the Cham, the Cham Muslims in a huge way. <coughs> they exterminated those people. There are still a million or so of them left, but they <coughs> annihilated those people in certain areas. And these are our people. These are people from our Ummah, these Cham Muslims. So when you're looking at the Vietnam War, it may be some of the photos you're seeing on television of kids being killed or, or adults being killed or Muslims. But because everything's in such a blur, you might not always notice. During this time, Chicano, black, and Arab separatist movements began to rise up in the United States. This would later lead to the murder of Iskander Ode by Jewish Defense League forces that the United States would never prosecute. All right, so Iskandar Ode was a Bedouin nationalist uh, that rose up because of Bedouin rights, how Arabs were being treated in the United States. He rose up along with other people to try to stop the situation of, of what they were going through. And he was later killed by the Jewish Defense League, which is a nationalist uh, Jewish organization in the United States. And they were never convicted by the U.S. government, although they knew who the trigger men were because they were seen by witnesses. You see? So it's one of those things. In 1386 AH, a newly converted Al Hajj Malik Shabazz was killed by NOI members in the Autobahn Ballroom in New York, while in 1388 AH, Martin Luther King Jr. was murdered by American patriot James Earl Ray. So, a lot was going on during this time in the 1370s, 1380s. In the year 1390 AH, American astronauts touched down on the moon. This would be the first of some 10 missions of return, the last one being in 1400 AH. Rock and roll was a prominent force and massive social upheavals were taking place in the United States, the United Kingdom, and some Muslim countries would later try to follow suit. So this was the era where you had the summer of love. There was Woodstock. Rock and roll was born. So you had Ike Turner, Jimi Hendrix, the Stones, the Who, the Beatles. This was sort of the golden age for rock and roll. Rhythm and blues was becoming a major force. Elvis had already come onto the scene. So you had Jailhouse Rock, all these shows. He started a film, an anti-Arab film called Harem Scarum, where he was, uh, the end of the film had him uh, shooting uh, some Arabs. He even wrote a song about owning, owning blacks as slaves, 
how he'd love to do that and all these other things. You had uh, John Wayne, who was around during this time in the Westerns. And the Mexicans used to be casted as extras. They wouldn't allow them to be starred in the, starring in the films. And all they told the Mexicans to do was act Mexican. And said, yeah, just be a Mexican. And so what they used to do was swear at John Wayne in Spanish. <laughs> and he didn't used to know what was going on. Neither did the extras because, you know, they're just speaking their strange language. And so you see these Spanish-speaking people. Those John Wayne movies are cult classics in Mexico. And in Chicano sections because they just sit there and watch these Mexican people swear at John Wayne. And he says, okay, pilgrim, I'll catch you later. And they use some, you know, expletive and they just laugh because this is how racist the United States is. They don't even check to see if you're even reading the script or saying your lines. It doesn't matter whether you use expletive or not because no one's going to even pay attention. So you had rock and roll music was sort of this rebellious form of music that teenagers were now getting into. We're trying to find our mom. I'm trying to find myself. Dropped out of school, won't work, won't take out the garbage because I'm trying to find myself. And subhanAllah, rather than find themselves and be homeless outside, they still want to find themselves indoors while they're living with you and eating your food. And so the 60s was a rough time. Abortion was legalized with the Roe versus, Roe versus Wade Act. And horrible upheavals were taking place. Asafar al-Aswad, the black journey continues. Untold numbers of Bedouin Arabs from among the Palestinians, Egyptians, Libyans, and others pay to either ride on boats or construct make makeshift rafts away from their countries. Some of them land in South America, in South American countries, while others land in Cuba. A huge influx of Spanish-speaking Arabs arrive on the West Coast and fills the West Coast after they're being expelled from the Southeast or fleeing clan violence. So you have... Tribes like the Al-Wazir, the Al-Khalifa, the Al-Kambuji, the Khashoggi, all these tribes from Egypt and other places, boat people, boat people that make it to Central or South America <laughs> fleeing the confiscation of their lands by communist warlords. Got nowhere to go. Where are they going to go? So they flee there. Riots and violence continue throughout the West Coast of the United States. Under curfew, martial law and violence used against them by the United States military, seven men form a collective known as the Community Resources for an Independent People, or CRIPS, modeled after the genius of its mastermind, Raymond Washington. This was at the same time that Huey P. Newton and Bobby Seale had formed the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense. Same, around the same time, but it was just, Raymond Washington came just after the extermination of the Black Panthers. So you had Raymond Washington and a collection of people, some of whom are Muslim, who form this group. The first drive-by shooting, the way that gangbangers do the drive-by shootings, the first drive-by shooting that we have of that was of the Oakland Police Department on the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense's headquarters. Where you have the man with the rifle, he's hanging out of the window, the car is in, the car's lights are on or off, and it's in neutral and it's gliding by. That that is that's the Oakland Police Department. And gangbangers, they took that on and made it their own. Took it on and made it their own. Now a constitution was formed with a man by the name of Danifu, and soon the Crips swelled in size, following some of the Black Panther for self-defense standards. Was Barrio Grape. Compton Tortilla Flats, 18th Street, and other barrios, Mexican. You had the Cairo 7, West Bank Boys, who were Arabs in Michigan, and Arabs in Long Beach began to, for, began to form into sets within the gang. Soon after that, a breakaway group formed from an internal feud called Bloods or Damu, which is Arabic uh, for blood, and also the same word that's used in Swahili. So this gang began to form. And you began at first with seven men. Then there were 50, then there were 100, then there were 200. And every section within the West Coast starts to fall under this haze of blue. If you're an Arab or a black or Mexican, you were in a gang, you are in a gang. It's just as simple as people here that they've been to, have you been to uni from the West Coast? You in a gang? You're in a gang. You're in a gang? You know somebody that's in a gang. 
these paramilitary groups, they're not, they're not gangs like how we have kids here that they go and they do breaking or they hang around and stand on the corner and they're not making any money and they look like chumps and they got their pants rolled down around their ankles. No, no, no. I mean actually paramilitary gangs with rocket launchers, AK-47s, they're fighting for territory, they've got a color line, they've got a constitution. Actual, the closest comparison that you have is the IRA in, 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 uh, in Northern Ireland. It is bad. And it was originally invented to try to combat that. But it got out of control, and you couldn't control the situation anymore. A man by the name of Robert Ballou is murdered by members of the Crips. A breakaway group forms called the Bloods because they, they disagreed with that and believed the people who did that should have been disciplined. And gradually, growth, 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 until now, the West Coast is the gang capital of the world, of the planet. The West Coast is the gang capital of the planet. That's how bad it is. Now, in 1400 AH, Mohammad Reza Shah Pahlavi, the last of Iran's shahs, was toppled in an overthrow so spectacular, the world almost forgot about the CIA overthrow of Mohammad Mossadegh, who the people had chosen in 1354 AH. The main goal of Ruhul Khomeini, the 12 year Shia cleric at the level of Murja al Taqlid, had been realized. His books, Al-Hukumatul Islamiyya and Wilayatul Faqih, the governance of the jurist, were now put into practice. It's this book here that was used as the basis for Khomeini's state, Wilayatul Faqih, which is the rule of the ulama, which suspiciously reads like some of Al-Qadibu Ya'la's works. Coincidence? No, it's not a coincidence. Borrowing. The Shia were in decline. They were almost defunct. They had to do something. And so they borrowed. And you'll find in this book precepts regarding fiqh that the Shia never had, fatawa they never knew about, a legal framework that they never could even digest. But now it was in this book. It's interesting reading. A lot of people, Sunnis, saw Khomeini as a hero in the 70s and were wrongly deceived by the fact of what he did. Oh, wait, he's done an Islamic revolution. He's a good man. Yes, in al hukumatul Islamiyah, he states that once we've conquered Mecca again, we will dig up the graves of Abu Bakr and Omar and throw the bodies in the street. You sure you want to follow this person? No, you don't want to follow this person. The sacred masjid was taken over in this same year by Salafi members who claimed that they had the Mahdi amongst them. One of them, Juhayman al utaybi had himself been a student of the late Bim Bass. The Saudis, upon seeing that the gates had been locked and they were unable to stop the carnage on the Hajj visitors, had no choice but to request help from the French Foreign Legion and United States Special Forces. However, in response to this happening, the temporal Saudi authorities realized that they had not blessed the moves they'd made with the cloak of Salafia. In speaking with the Salafi theologians, they had them backdate their ruling to say that they knew about the military action, they allowed it, and ultimately gave the ruling that brought it into the peninsula. So they knew that they were lying when they backdated it, they knew that they were lying when they signed it, and they knew that they were lying when they wrote it. It's a really interesting article on this. That's in the Journal of Middle Eastern Studies on the sacred mosque siege really good article and it actually gives the names of the scholars that lied and backdated their ruling Ben Baz, Uthaymin, other number very impressive absolutely impressive and there's even a couple of Sunni scholars on there unfortunately and it's it's not the thing that should have been done like Muhammad Alawi al-Maliki who himself wrote a book in which he stated notions that must be corrected in this book that he said that Muhammad Abu Wahab is misunderstood. He's a great Sunni theologian, there's no doubt about that. But that was, a com that was a complete travesty. He should have never signed that document. He should not have lied. He should not have done that. Just like you have Abdullah bin Abdul Rahman al-Jibreen. He went into the Saudi government. He should have never done that. The man's a faqih. Same thing with Muhammad ibn Ibrahim. He should never have done that. The man's a faqih. He should not have done that. But they did. And it wasn't right for them to do that. Russian troops, we're coming to that in just a moment. So, in speaking with Salafi theologians, they had them backdate their ruling to say that they knew about the military action, allowed it, and ultimately gave the ruling that brought it into the peninsula. So they allowed the French Foreign Legion and 
special forces of the U.S. to come into Masjid al-Haram to help them defeat these people. 